everyone beautiful day on the island absolutely stunning um i thought this week i would just take a little bit of time out to talk about my etsy shop because i've been working with it a lot and i've been thinking about it a lot and um i've also been reading about etsy a lot online and um watching videos on etsy just to kind of feel get a feel for where i am with the narrative and there are a lot of videos out there on how to succeed on on etsy and i have been blessed i have been very successful on etsy um, but I think my story might be a little bit different. So I'll pop the camera around and um, you can see what you think. Okay, got my tea. Let's settle in, have a little think about this. I thought I'd just leave this book here for a moment. This is such a good starting point. Um, if you watch all the YouTube videos and you do all your research, you'll hear about um, the Etsy algorithm. You'll hear about the importance of niching down and you'll hear about the importance of SEO. And then you'll probably hear declarations. If you do all that, you'll make a thousand sales in a week, which clearly you won't. Um, so I thought um, there's nothing wrong with what they're saying, apart from the thousand sale, sales in a week, which I heard recently. There's nothing wrong with the rest of it. You do have to do all of that. But it left me a bit cold. And I just I've been thinking about it. And I'm thinking there's something that you do before any of that in my world. Um, which is you consider what your creative, authentic voice is. What is it that you want to share with the world? What is your creative story? And that story then stays with you through every product idea you have, every listing that you make, every conversation with a customer you have. I think that is so, so important. I think customers are very savvy people, particularly on Etsy, I've found. And I think if it's not authentic, they jolly well know it is. And if they know that you're making something and you're not loving it, you're not feeling it in any way, that comes across to them really quickly. So I think I'm, I've been very blessed. I've had about 2,000 sales, about 2013 now, something like that, over the last two and a half, three years, and um, which is quite a lot, really, for Etsy, and particularly when a lot of my stuff is handmade. Um, and even my kits that I do have got handmade elements in them. But why have, I, why have I managed to do that? And I think it's back to what I just said, because I, um, I'm, I'm very authentic. So if you take this book, for example, this book was eco-printed. Do you see the leaves? It was eco-printed last year. The flower was from the garden last year and pressed. The, the label is handmade. There aren't two books like this. There is just this book. So I think that's really important in my story. So if you take a book that I've just listed for example this is when this this narrative occurred to me um, um that it might be worth sharing really that this was part of a snippet roll paper snippet roll which i then cut up and each section went on to one of these lovely um pink pig sketchbooks which i highly recommend uh, made in the uk and i use them as as an artist myself um and this is a portion of a snippet roll which can never be repeated i would never bear to repeat it the other thing about my story is that I sell to a lot of creative folk and I think I feel I've started the creative story or the conversation, let's call it that. I've started the conversation. The minute they open the book up and they start doing their work inside, the conversation has carried on and I just love that and that's very much part of my story. Um, sometimes I will put on some of my original art pieces. I've fallen down a collage um rabbit hole for the last two two months or so loved it and so i've shared i'm proud of my work and i've shared it and i think you have to be proud of your work that you're putting on etsy i think that's really important sometimes i, I do go a little bit far with this idea but 
there is there is a reason for it and it is to do with where i am in my career i'm in my late 50s i'm coming to the end of my commercial year my commercial experience as an artist i think and, I, and i'm putting back and i've got lots of sketchbooks with lots of work in it and so recently i've been taking some of the sketch pages out and making books out of them do you see this has just got lots of different sorts of papers in it handmade paper and card and craft and watercolor and mixed media and again i think a creative would like that and i'd be very happy for them to take that that cover that i've made and i hope that inspires them to do something um inside the book so i do that and that's very much part of my story even if i'm selling something very functional um, this is just a flower press but i sell them because they're just a good size to throw in your bag when you're out and about but i i, I, I do printing with botanicals but on my gel press and I've always got bits and pieces left over that I haven't made the cut for something else. And it's a good use of it. And I just think then, again, no two, no, no two presses the same. But I kind of want to sort of end with where I started. This is probably my second biggest seller of all time. My, my biggest seller are the tiny little boxes I have of beach finds and, and complementary fabrics and stuff. I love that. But this is also an excellent seller. And this is my little dream pillow. And I made them... Um, oh, well, I've made them, oh gosh, 20 years, I would think. I would think it's 20 years. Inside are, uh, is lavender grown by me and hops and sometimes a little bit of peppermint grown by me. Again, I'm growing, I'm drying, I'm processing, I'm making the pillow. It's not a quick thing, but it's a beautiful process and it connects me with the seasons and it connects me with the natural world. And um there are times when I think, oh, crikey, I've got to make another load of dream pillows. Um, but it doesn't stop me doing it because it's a big seller. And I think people have benefited from them. I think um, lavender doesn't help you sleep. That's a myth. Lavender does help you relax. It's the hops that help you sleep. If I made a hops pillow, nobody would buy them because it's not a very nice smell. So the combination works really well. And some people do have trouble sleeping. And so I do make them and I make a pour a bit of love into everyone that I do, even if, if I'm like, oh, I've got to get my sewing machine out. Because the minute I go near lavender, of course, I'm like, oh, I'm loving my day job sort of feeling. So I think that um, I think that you've got to love what you do and you have got to listen to your customers. You've got to have excellent customer service. I used to have a physical shop and I treat my Etsy shop exactly the same way. I go in every day. I shift things around, I take listings off that have been sat a while, I put new listings on, I um, message customers, respond to messages, that sort of thing. And then obviously I promote it on, on uh, in my other places, not least on, on YouTube. But the point is that you have to treat it like a business and you have to treat it like a shop. You can't just list things and then sit back and expect them to sell because it won't work like that. But I think if you are authentic and you do treat it like a shop, like a physical shop, and you have got excellent customer service and your finishing skills are good you stand a very very good chance on etsy i know there's a lot of hype about the fees have gone up and just what is being now sold on etsy but do you know i blank all that out because i have a lovely relationship with my etsy shop um i it's it's i get a better deal on etsy than i would if i was selling in a physical shop in somebody else's shop or in a gallery i can turn it off as well and i do from time to time when i need a break from it um, not just because I'm on holiday, but maybe because I, I just need a break from, from making for a while. So I have full control of it. And I love my Etsy shop. Now, would I still love my Etsy shop if I hadn't been as successful as I have? Yes, I would, because I'd be very proud of what I put in it. So whether you're thinking about Etsy, another marketplace, or maybe your own website, I do wish you every, every success with your venture. See you next time. Mm -hmm.